Hello my soccer universe, the New Look Champions League is set to begin on Tuesday with an exclusive week, only Champions League action and I thought this is the latest point that I can make a little preview of this entire Champions League season. Look at the draw, give an analysis of the draw, yes I couldn't do it uh, sooner because I was on vacation and then I waited for the international break to get it done. So this is what the main focus will be in this video, but before that we also have to have a look back at the qualification round. Well, let me first level with you. I have been watching, of course, a few qualifying games and I've also been following qualifying. However, I've largely ignored it for making videos on my channel. The simple reason being that I knew that during the playoff round, I will be on vacation. I cannot make videos. Also, for the qualification rounds, my jersey collection is rather thin at times and so I focused my energy more into preparing for this Champions League. But at least let's look briefly over the results of this qualifying round. It also gives me an excuse to wear this beautiful young boys Bern jersey probably for the only time this season I hope not but let's go about that first qualification round the most notable thing about this one is that Slovan Bratislava who qualified for the league phase actually started in the first qualification round so they survived already four rounds beating Strugelum from Northern Macedonia 6 to an aggregate I also want to point out the duel of the Giants between the Lincoln Red Imps from Gibraltar and the Hamburg Spartans from Malta both got 1-0 away wins and then the Lincoln Red Imps won at home on penalties. In the second qualification round, a few more big names already entered. The main focus probably, at least for me, that also a highlight that I saw was the duel between Fenerbahce and Lugano. A really wild first leg that Fenerbahce won 4-3 away from home. And then they won the return leg 2-1 at home as well with Sparta Prague beating the Shamrock Rovers from Ireland with an aggregate score of 6-2. Pauk had a little bit of a trouble beating Boris Baneluk at home 3-2 and 1-0 away when sees them through as well. And Dinamo Kiev completely steamrolled Partizan Belgrade Great. That was a result that I did not foresee. An aggregate score of 9 2. Partisan not looking good in this qualifying for any of the European competitions. The first live matches in qualifying I saw when Salzburg took on Twente in the third qualifying round. They had a very dominant game against Twente at home. They had a 2 lead and then laid on the concede one, which kept the game alive in the return leg. It ended 3 3. However, Salzburg had a 2 0 and a 3 1 lead. They were very efficient and very dominant. However, they just let Twente hang around and so they allowed them to come back to 3 3. However, Twente could not find the overall equalizer. Drama all also in the duel between Malmö and Pauk. Pauk managed to get a 2-2 draw at Malmö, then they lose 4-3 at home in overtime, conceding a late equalizer to go into this overtime period. We had Lille ousting Fenerbahce. This was a little bit of an upset, although Mourinho then said, yeah, the Europa League is more our level, but that was definitely a downer for them. We had Karabakh losing at home 2-1 to Lula Gores and then winning 7-2 in overtime. Crazy result there. We also had a duel of two classic Eastern European teams with Sparta Prague meeting FCSB which is of course the successor to Stauer Bucharest 4-3 on aggregate for Sparta we had the other Prague team beating Union saint Gilles 4-1 on aggregate that was also a stunner and Dynamo Kiev got the better of Rangers with a 2-0 away win at Ibrox the Turkish disaster was complete when young boys ousted champions Galatasaray 4-2 on aggregate this is pre Oseman Galatasaray is still a major upset that the Swiss champions managed to do. Salzburg had it relatively easy with a 3-1 aggregate over Dynamo Kiev with Sparta Prague ousting Malmö 4-0 on aggregate. Shows how good actually Sparta Prague is. Dynamo Zagreb won the first leg at home to Karabakh 3-0, although this was a way, way tighter game. I think if this was a 3-2 or 2-2 would have been better, but then it's a 5-0 on aggregate. Bode actually had a chance of qualifying. They had a 2-1 home win against Cervena Zvezda, however, Cervena Zvezda start turning around at least one serving team is in the Champions League. Sparta City rival Slavia lost out to Lille. That was kind of expected after Lille already hosted Fenerbahce. They had a 2-0 home win and then also got an equalizer early on in Prague. And then Slovan defeating Midjylland. That was probably the other sensation of this round. And again Slovan made it to four qualification rounds. So after all this qualification mayhem, where many teams got eliminated and only 7 spots were awarded through qualification, which tells you the power of the big clubs but also the threat of the Super League is real. We got the following pots with 36 teams, 9 teams in each pot and 
Crucially, this time around the pots did not necessarily mean that you will get an easier draw if you are in a higher pot. No, this is simply to make sure that every team faces roughly equally difficult opponents, at least of what UEFA is thinking, because if you look at certain teams in certain pots, I'm looking especially in pot 2, a Club Bruges and probably even a Schachter Donetsk are really sticking out as not so great, where arguably some bigger teams are really stuck in pot 4, with especially Villa in there, but you know, Stuttgart have also not been as bad. You also see that the small teams that had great seasons were all stuck in pot 4. This is your Bologna's, your Girona's, your Stuttgart's and of course Brest as the lowest ranked of all these teams and those are the teams that actually had a special focus on in this draw. Now with having to assign eight opponents for each team this would have been a really really lengthy draw if you would do it the old-fashioned way so they went for a computer system which made the draw incredibly boring I only watched a little bit of pot 2 and it was not exciting. You draw a team and then Ronaldo presses the button to spit out the 8 opponents, which kills any suspense. I think it would have been at least teeny bit more exciting if yes he presses the button but then only the home opponents are assigned so you know who you will play at home but you would have watched the, all the other teams being drawn before you know your away opponents as well. It's the first time maybe UEFA will reconsider the next time. So here are all the opponents first for pots 1 and pot 2 and all the way to the right there's also a little indicator that should give you an idea how easy or how tough this draw was. We see for instance PSG has a pretty big red bar a lot of tough opponents. PSG had the toughest draw of all the teams, which I think might also be due to the fact that, you know, we still have these country restrictions in place. And so PSG couldn't play against another French team and there were many, many big teams left for them in the algorithm. So PSG would have probably been hammered anyway. It is also something we observe basically for all French teams. Most importantly to me is of course Milan. I think it was really tough out of pot 1, Real Madrid away from home and Liverpool at home, which is also the opening opponent. Le Bruges, nice. Leverkusen away from home, not nice. I think all the other four opponents are opponents that Milan should be able to beat. However, we know that the new season didn't start as well. I was also really amazed how City again got kind of a sweet draw and the same thing goes for Bayern. Yes, Bayern play PSG and Barcelona. However, all the other opponents are cakewalk for Bayern to be honest maybe not Aston Villa and that's a nice rematch of the 82 European Cup final let's go over to pots three and four Celtic got the easiest draw of all not easy opponents necessarily for Celtic but this is a really sweet draw for Celtic their chances of advancing have definitely improved when I look on the top Feyenoord and Sporting got relatively tough draws as did Lille on the other side you always have to think you know for these teams are you really hoping to advance or do you want to see attractive opponents and I think in the case of Lille you got quite some attractive opponents but the most important is pot 4 because we want to see how the surprise teams from last season did do. We have Brest getting the full Austrian treatment and this is also the first two games they both play Salzburg and Sturm Graz. They play Real Madrid home Barcelona away I think it couldn't be sweeter for them in that case. The other opponents maybe not so attractive but hey it's their first Champions League run. Stuttgart also got a relatively attractive draw, although I think the home opponents are not as great as their away opponents. Girona, yeah, that is pretty attractive as well and is slightly on the toughish side. And then if I look at Bologna, Bologna play against Dortmund at home, Liverpool away, that's highlight game. Schacht at home is probably not so exciting, but then at least you get Lille, Sporting, Monaco. Those are relatively big names. From an Austrian perspective, I'm relatively satisfied. Salzburg maybe got some tough opponents. They play both Madrid teams. They play also PSG and Leverkusen. So that is really, really tough. Not really easy to get through. But on the other side, Sturm Graz got relatively attractive opponents. Opponents that they already know also in there with Atalanta Sporting at the last year in the group phase. But I think Sturm Graz will probably like their slim chances of advancing. Of course, I ran my model all over this Champions League. However, it did take me a whole lot of time to actually program this all through. And here are the expected standings. 
based on 10,000 simulations, where would the teams finish up on average? You also see on the side the arrows indicating the changes pre-draw versus post-draw. So if you have a green arrow, your league position changed to the positive, you got a better one. If you have a red arrow, you got a slightly worse one. Of course, Manchester City are the big favorites. We have then Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Arsenal. I was a little bit surprised to see, but also Barcelona, Inter. Dortmund and Liverpool should be the top eight teams making it into the round of 16 auto automatically as for the playoff teams the seeded teams would be Leverkusen Atletico Milan Atalanta PSG Villa Juve and Leipzig and then on the bottom the unseeded playoff teams would be PSV Stuttgart Sporting Monaco Benfica Girona Bologna and Celtic so this is where we are currently at the moment you see also the shading on the side for the top 24 spots the greener it is the more likely you are to end up there so you see of course City very much the favorites to finish top of the table as you would expect but Real Madrid is not too far behind and it's a little bit wider for the bottom half of the table of course those teams are relatively unlikely to make it into the top 24 and of course with the simulations I can spin it further and see who is gonna win most likely and this is the table that we have here the top favorites as computed right after the draw we have Manchester City the top favorites ahead of Real Madrid and then there's a huge gap everything else is then relatively even still surprised to see Arsenal so high ahead of Bayern Munich to be honest uh, Liverpool Barcelona Inter PSG in there as well and I think those eight are the ones that we would look for to lift the trophy anybody else is really an outsider shots that also includes of course my favorite team in this competition which is Milan I also want to use this video to a little bit talk about this new format because I haven't really done it publicly on this channel. On one part, I thought we don't really need to fix something that was working quite well, but I do agree that the group stage was not very exciting most of the times. You had your occasional marquee matchups and maybe some groups went down to the wire. The Champions League was usually only living off the knockout stage where there was really good stuff being played and maybe that a favorite would get eliminated. For that reason, while it is needlessly complicated and probably sportingly not even all that fair to have now a league table of 36 teams but each team only plays eight games but it actually keeps the competition a little bit more open we also saw in the draw that uh, pots don't matter all that much anymore it's just which opponents do you get and that every team gets some tough and some not so tough opponents so I think that is also quite nice it levels the field a little bit because it could really have been that you were in a group of death and then you have not really a chance of advancing or going further even though you were probably a better team than other teams in the competition so from that point i also welcome the new format it will be interesting to see how this new playoff round will work i do like that we don't have any relegation to the europa league anymore i think that is an added bonus the one thing that i'm already a little bit lamenting is they still will have a knockout draw where i thought you know you have the league table this should set up the entire higher knockout tree already that this will be a draw is a little bit annoying me i would assume they do it to keep nations again apart also in the playoffs and, and so on but i don't think this is needed it makes it unnecessary complicated but hey it gives more watch time to uefa we get underway with the new champions league i said with an exclusive champions league week which means we have from tuesday Wednesday and Thursday we have each day six games to look forward to and there are on each day quite some highlight games the highlight on the first match day is of course Milan hosting Liverpool that's number two versus number three the overall ranking of winners so a pretty big matchup right there we have Juve kicking it all off against PSV and Young Boys at home to Aston Villa the other games on Tuesday I have to see are probably relatively lopsided if you look at the big teams for instance Bayern against Zagreb and Real Madrid against Stuttgart should be easy wins but then sporting against Lille I think is a match to watch. Wednesday I think that Sparta Prague against Salzburg could be a really interesting match. Celtic against Lowe is also a low level one but of course it's all the rematch of the 23 final between City and Inter. That's a pretty big matchup. We also have Club Bruges against Dortmund and PSG against Girona and then on Thursday we may not have this top level matchup however I think Monaco against Barcelona there is a little bit some cloud there. Of course there's also a duel of former winners between Javenas Vesda and Benfica. I think that's the 
Madrid is an interesting one. Feyenoord against Leverkusen could be an exciting one. As could be Atalanta against Arsenal, to be honest. Atletico Madrid against Leipzig is probably the biggest name matchup. And then Brest take on Sturm Graz. Really looking forward to that one, honestly. Maybe that's the one that I will put a little bit of focus on. Because, although, I really think I will watch them all at once. So in any case, this was my little preview for the Champions League. Of course, I could have done more on the analytics part, but I thought I'm not going to bore you too much with the facts there. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to know a little bit more analytically. For instance, how many points do you need to make sure to be in the top eight or to qualify for the playoffs and so on. That is something I can probably easily do, but I didn't want to do it necessary for this video to keep it at least in a palatable depth. In any case, please let me know what you think about the new Champions League format. Also, which games are you looking forward to and where do you think will your team end up in? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!